people seem to think that they can tell Shannon it's OK because look at you. Look at some of the more prominent African-Americans. But no, we make up a small, small portion. We're disproportionate. We don't we're, we're not we're not the norm in black society. So if you don't experience that, you don't know what exists. So stop trying to fool me and to say, well, Shannon, you crazy. It's because you taking too many hits to the head. That that doesn't happen in America. That's not true. I, I know that it does. Yeah. And we're saying I'm not saying, look, all cops are not bad. Right. All blacks are not thugs. All whites are not racist. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, is that you judge each individual person on his or her merits. Yep. So when a cop does something, good cops, call him out. You got it. Because if you are complicit, you are encouraging it and you are condoning it. See, when Pookie shoots Ray Ray, they find Pookie and he gets 25 to life. Mm -hmm. Officer Johnson shoots uh, uh, Dave, mm. he gets paid leave and nothing happens. That's True. what we want. We want equal justice for equal crime. Mm -hmm. We want equal pay for equal work. That's what we want. We want to be treated. If you, the Constitution says all men are created equal, well, then why do we have to have all these laws and all these amendments and all these acts mm -hmm. just to make sure everybody's created equal? They say one nation under God. If we're one nation, why are we treated so unequal? That's what I want to know. It's a great question. There's a reason why they put all these in place. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, it doesn't apply when it comes to certain groups. We want to know why. That's all. I don't ask for my grandmother to say she used to, uh, she really never called my brother and I. She was always called his boy. She'd say, son, she say, boy, if, if, if you give a man your word, you, you, you do what you say you're going to do. If a man gives you an honest salary. You give him an honest day's work. Mm. And I remember me and my cousin, we're making five bucks a day, working seven to seven. We called it can't to can't. When you went to work, you couldn't mm. see. When yep. you came home, you couldn't see. I like that. We was making five bucks a day. And I let my cousin, he was two years older than me, talk me into going to ask Mr. Joe for a raise. I said, Mr. Joe, we've been working hard. I mean, we work hard, Mr. Joe. We need a raise. He called me Pee Wee because I was real small. He said, Pee Wee, how much you think you... You should get. I just threw out a dollar, a dollar. So he gave. So now instead of making five bucks a day, we're making six bucks a day. So me and my cousin, we think we feeling really good about ourselves. So instead of working as hard as we normally do, we started playing and lollygagging. My sister tells my grandma, Granny, Shannon and Lanny was playing in the field. <laughs> my grandma ain't said. My grandma didn't say a word. The next morning. She goes outside. She said, Joe, I heard you gave them boys a raise. Libby told me they were playing. Take it back. Mm. Take it back because you didn't earn it. I want what I earn. Mm -hmm. I want my respect. I want my dignity. Give me that. And if you're not going to give it to me, I won't deny it. Yep. That's all I'm asking. Still. I got it. That's all we asking at the that's all we asking at, be it minorities, be it uh, uh black or Latino, be it women, be it the LBG community. That's all we ask. We're asking for our respect and our dignity. Mm. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. I love and respect your passion for this topic. And I, I asked you a quick question. Did you happen to catch Tony Dungy last night on NBC before I, the game? I did not. Because you and I spoke at one point, and I think I'd barely hung up, and he started to speak on this topic. I don't know a more godly man than Tony Dungy is. He is. He is. He, he's a fine human being to the core. Yes. And he spoke, and I don't want to paraphrase too much what he said, but he said there were times as he was growing up when he asked his father if he could not stand for the national anthem. And when he said that, when those words came from his mouth, it really opened my white guy eyes like, wow, Tony Dungy went through this. Felt just as passionately as you did. At some point he said, and I'm, par I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he said, as a Christian man, 
I finally decided I do need to stand up and I need, do need to fight back other ways. That was his choice. Mm -hmm. That's not your choice, and I respect your choice because your choice is, is shocking to me, but it's opening a lot of eyes. Yes, and to skip the for, for you to constantly want to address this issue, when we go, when we come in at 3.15 and get here at 4 o'clock and you says, okay, Shannon, what do you, what do you feel? Do you want to talk about this? You never shy away from this topic, dealing with race. And a lot of men in your position, a lot of men of your color, color, don't want to touch this issue because it's too inflammatory. But for you to be willing to sit at this table with me and to jo with Joy, who is a woman mm -hmm. who's also in a minority as she's black, mm -hmm. to sit at this table with us and say, yep. okay, Let's have open dialogue. Let's talk about it. Because and at the this, end of this conversation is crucial to the, to the future of this country. It's crucial. Right. You know it and I know it. Ab absolutely. We're, we're, we're on a tightrope here right now. We're, 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 we're yep. teetering. Yep. And I don't know. And I said last week, I think it's getting better. I'm not necessarily sure that it's better, but I know we have 24-hour news cycle and we have something called social media and camera phones. So what you used to have to yep. wait for, maybe the next day, or you had to wait for the 6 or the 11 o'clock news. You got it. You're not waiting. It happens, and you see it. And sometimes you see it as it's happening. Mm. And that is the difference. And so now you don't have, okay, well, this happened over there. Because now, Skip, it's happening. It used to be when, school, when things like school shootings would happen. Well, it didn't happen in my neighborhood. That's never going to happen here. Or when police brutality, that's never... Now it's in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now it's in your school. Correct. And it's getting closer and closer. And eventually, I do believe we're going to have this open and honest dialogue, but we, it needs to come really, really fast. Beautifully said. One thing that's frustrating and, quite frankly, hurtful for me is something that you bring up all the time, is that there's a big group of people that are in denial Yes. That this exists because it's an uncomfortable topic. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to say, well, it's not really a thing. It's being overblown by social media right. or by television and people talking about it so much. It's not really as big of a deal as it is. Or you're making it up, which you always say, don't right. tell me that I'm making it up. Right. And because it's an uncomfortable topic and Colin Kaepernick is protesting and all these players are protesting in a way that people think is unpatriotic or are painting it as unpatriotic, they're putting the forefront on the actual protest right. and say and focusing on, oh, well, you're kneeling, kneeling during the national anthem or you're doing it on 9-11 and focusing on the protest rather than the actual message mm -hmm. because it makes people uncomfortable. The most patriotic thing we can do is to protest. That's how America was founded. Well, if you look at the most impactful protests, just in civil, just sticking with civil rights yes. only, not even women or LGBT or any of that, just sticking with civil rights only, we have revisionist history. Those protests were very uncomfortable and got yes. violence. And now when we look at it, we, we treat these people as heroes because they are, but we don't focus on how uncomfortable well, those times Colin were. Kaepernick should protest on his own time. Well, the police unions, when they pick it and when they strike, they don't wait till they get off work. They don't show up to no, work. No, exactly. The teachers union, when they strike, they don't wait till after class. They strike before class. Mm -hmm. In the transit authority, when they shut down, yep. they don't say, let's make sure we get everybody to and from their work, and then we're going to do it. No, you do it at the most inopportune time to create exactly to create the change. most uncomfortable situation mm -hmm. so we can come to the table and discuss, be it pay, be it better working conditions, mm -hmm. be it uh, uh, compensation as far as health care, whatever the case may be. But this is what you do. That's what is patriotic about protests mm -hmm. because you're trying to get the people to understand and to hear you.